i think the organization of whatever knowledge you have is is very good and that is what probably differentiated you from a lot of other students that is what i can figure out uh, you know as a listener right now because what little information you have from different areas you are able to organize it well and you are able to present it well in front of the examiner ek waisa rajasthani thali hoti hai na you have little bit of everything ha ah, 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 yeah, yeah so it looks Absolutely. better than than a chole bhature ah. ka thali <laughs> right and it, and it also helps you know if the examiner has a diverse diet you just give him one thing he probably won't like that <laughs> yes yes give him many things pick yeah. and choose exactly Perfect exactly exactly Hi everyone my name is Anuj Jindal welcome to my channel today we are going to have a discussion with Mr Arka Banerjee who has cleared RBI grade B 2021 in his second attempt first of all congratulations a lot arga on clearing the examination uh, you know in in such a short span of time i should say because to be very honest a lot of students end up spending a lot of time on clearing this examination various other prestigious examinations like this one there must be a lot of things that the students have to learn from you and i'm very certain with this session we will be able to come out with some small small pointers that might help the students out there so before starting with the actual interview i would want uh, so that that you can introduce yourself tell all the students all the aspirants a little bit about yourself and then we will start with the actual questions yeah sure So I am Orko Banerjee, and I come from Bandel, which is about say one and a half hours from Kolkata in West Bengal. I did my bachelor's in physics from Presidency College, Kolkata, then my master's from Presidency University. Then I was doing a research project in the Indian Statistical Institute (ISI) in Kolkata, by also applying abroad. So I finally got in to do my PhD at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities in the U.S. and i was doing it for almost 2 years and then i got my ms degree there as well and then certain things happened both professionally and personally which is why i came back started preparing for government exam mostly upsc and the other regulatory exams like nabard sebi rbi and for the first year 2018 end i started so it was mostly upsc no rbi and any other thing else i qualified prelims i gave the mains couldn't get through so just before that i decided so i need to give i need to have also have a good plan b which is also very respectable and where i can contribute to the nation as well so that is when i started looking at uh, the rbi thing and the rbi notification came out right after the upsc mains i remember watching a video where you were talking about the last number of vacancies that came out that time and then i realized i had only had one month so i subscribed to your course there was a discount going on as well <laughs> so i subscribed to subscribe to your course but i only had one month to prepare so my quant and reasoning was not up to the level i couldn't clear phase 1 in my first year so and in the second year that's when i decided that i should practice quant and reasoning at least uh, properly so that i could at least get a good score in phase 1 as well and but then the pattern changed and when the pattern changed what happened was most people who practiced a lot they couldn't really you uh, utilize that because the questions were hard as well that kind of uh, helped me and my upsc prep also helped me because in descriptive it's obvious that we get an advantage mm. and now after mains and the interview i'm selected okay okay amazing so uh, arga here has a very straightforward story uh, that a lot of aspirants look for in the selected students because he's one of those aspirants who was not primarily focused only on upsc and rbi is not just a by product rbi uh, he's also given sebi mains last year so he's one of those students who are preparing for rbi and other you know uh, connected examinations very seriously who are looking at it as a good option that they can work in that they can make their career in other than upsc in case upsc does not work out the civil services does not work out so uh, first of all i would want to know let's start with phase 1 let's start with the sources first and in the meantime we'll try and figure out if we can have certain other uh, questions as well what okay. sources did you use for phase 1 what are the challenges you faced in the phase 1 last yeah. year specifically because the pattern changed and what would yeah. be your advice to the stu- students who are going to write it this year yes so after 2019 i decided that i had to practice phase 1 so i used uh, kiran's material for a quant 
which kind of many people who give SBI PO also uh, practice from that. That's quite good. And Arya Sagarwal for reasoning. And those two are the things for quant and reasoning. English, uh, I come from a convent school, so it was kind of a, a strong point for me. So I didn't have anything extra to do about it. Hmm. Uh, general awareness was completely spotlight because I don't, I didn't, I don't like you know looking at too many sources. It just kind of muddles up your mind. So hmm. it was spotlight RBI 247 and PIB 247. Hmm. Just reading, revising, reading, revising again and again. I didn't look at a first cloud because why look at it anyway? So, hmm. so I just saw the spotlight and but I couldn't. I guess complete all six months like you. I think advice. I could only do three four months. And what I realized in the exam was that some questions actually came from October 2020, which I kind of skipped. So that was a disadvantage. But since the pattern changed, what helped me was that even though my practice was probably not up to that high level that RBI uh, wants, probably it helped me because many people also face a certain difficulty. Where I guess my physics background and because I like doing maths and reasoning, it kind of helped me. And then mains, again, it helped me because RBI wasn't my primary target. So I was doing mains answer writing for UPSC even in December 2020. And mm -hmm. when the RBI notification came out with that uh, descriptive part, I was very happy. Mm -hmm. And so after uh, giving SEVI mains, I gave the phase one. Then just after that, I started with uh, preparing for phase two mm -hmm. using a revision videos mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Phase one was just this, nothing else. Okay, perfect. So in phase one, uh, you mentioned that you, uh, you know, uh, prepared uh, or practiced questions of quant and reasoning. English was a given because uh, of your background there. And general awareness, you stick to some sources and you use that. Two questions here. Number one, related to general awareness. A lot of students are still doing this mistake, are still making this mistake of covering only phase one current affairs before phase one. And no. and I have been saying it for the last three, four years that cover phase two current affairs, please cover it before phase one. So I would want it, you know, hear it out from you because you have been selected. How important will it be and how important was it to cover phase two and phase one current affairs before phase one itself? No, it's very important. So when I started out, for example, if I, I started out with February current affairs or January current affairs, I do spotlight RBI 247, PIB 247. So because it also kind of builds up, you know, a knowledge base, because in GA, not all questions come from who, whose name is this, who, who is that, or things like that. Sometimes it also comes from some Hatke sources. So you have to prepare for everything. And then after phase one, you only have 20 days max, even without revision. So how are you going to do phase two? It's not just about current affairs. I think you should finish your syllabus before uh, phase one itself, at least finance and economics, because I think it helps you in doing the GA as well. Some questions directly come from that. From phase two syllabus as well. Management, I think you can do after if you don't have time. I mm. finished management before as well because of SEBI. Mm. But yeah, very important to do current affairs for both uh, phase one and phase two in a holistic manner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, what amount of time do you think is enough? So, you covered Spotlight for three months. And yeah. for, for how long or how many months of PIB and RBI 247 did you cover in this time span? Yeah. So, I started from, say, January. So, uh, from January, what I did was February, January, December, I completed the full spotlight. November and October, I did, I think there's an average person, I'm forgetting the name. Um, flashcards. Flashcards, right. Yes. Flashcards, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I did the flashcards, but not completely. Mm -hmm. For PIV and, and RBI 247, I did again November to February. And it took me quite a long time. So what I usually do is I don't usually sit and study current affairs continuously. Let's mm -hmm. say I take... Uh, 10 to 20 pages every day. I mm. think that's a wholesome procedure. You do, you take 20 pages, it probably takes you one and a half hours. You're done with it at night or while going to sleep, just look at those 20 pages and then for that day it's done. So in six days, you do 120 pages. Spotlight is usually 120 and then you start with the MCQs, right? So in every week you're finishing current affairs. You're not just doing current affairs and then panicking that, okay, I don't know anything else, mm. what I'm going to do. So I think this is probably a better way to do it than does reading current affairs. It also strains your mind. I guess. It, it's tiring to be only current affairs. Yeah, I think that's a very good strategy. Uh, so the, normally the mistake that students do is either they're reading only today's current affairs today uh, yeah. what that does is uh, you're always looking out for the latest current affairs early in the morning. Right. If you're, right. But on the other hand, if you're covering last month's current affairs, you already have that notebook right. in your hand. 
So you know, okay, I have to cover one twenty pages in the next six uh-huh. days. So, so it, one one yes, sir, sorry, sir. One yes, more yes. point is that in February. So in February, we don't usually have the kind of as you know, as a compilation. We have fifteen days. You give fifteen days. So what I used to do was I used to do daily, but with a two day lag, like just like you said. Because mm-hmm. if something happens and if Neha Ma'am doesn't put up the video or the PDF that day, mm-hmm. what I'm going to do? Mm-hmm. Will I panic and do nothing else? So I just mm-hmm. used to give a two-day lag, mm-hmm. give her enough time to produce it because I don't have to do every day kind of as every day. I can mm-hmm. do two days back. It's it's a wholesome procedure. It's, it's not a problem. That's mm-hmm. what I did to counter that. Mm-hmm. I think it's a very good strategy and. uh especially for students who are always looking out for current affairs every day i think they're wasting a lot of time in doing yeah, that yeah yeah exactly. yes yes we should not be doing that we are unnecessarily pack- panicking about you know things that don't matter yeah Beaut- beautiful and uh, what about content reasoning uh, let me start with with one thing one procedure procedure that i think uh, may work out best for the students you just let me know if this is the procedure you followed or not So we were recently discussing about what should be the right procedure for students when they're starting with content reasoning from scratch, and we created four levels. First is you watch videos if you are completely blank in a certain area, and you build up your concepts. Second is you practice questions from one section at one time. For example, I picked up time and work. I picked up thirty, forty questions from time and work, and I practiced those questions. Let's say in the next one hour. Third level would be to put a timer. and then practice let's say i will decide okay 30 minutes 30 questions of time and work these are the questions that i'm going to practice let's see how i score okay and when i'm comfortable with the timer then the fourth level would be to start practicing through comprehensive mocks by putting myself in that in, in that environment actual exam environment is this the subconscious procedure uh, you fo- followed or was there anything else else that you included in this as well um mostly the same thing but uh, what i was to do was so the uh, so your phase one i think i mean your fourth four phase thing but the phase one you say the reading some formulas and all those things i guess understanding it that's good i usually used to go directly into problems and learn from that hmm. and about the timer thing so i think i should do it in the same day for example if i let's say i start time and work hmm. so for the first 30 minutes i look at exam solved examples and then probably do two or three examples itself Mm-hmm. Then for the next thirty minutes, which is my one hour of content every day, I just take out my mobile phone, start the stopwatch, and do ten questions. Not one. Just don't don't do one and then look at the stopwatch. That doesn't help. Do ten questions and then see how how long it takes. Then stop, look at what went wrong, and then do another ten ten questions and see how long it takes. Mm-hmm. That kind of builds up your you know, resilience as you go on. So mm-hmm. I used to combine those three phases together, and then the final one was absolutely marks mm-hmm. to you know to get. simulate the exam thing hmm hmm i think yeah beautifully said i think that is a better technique for students who are now well versed right. with the topic and well know that they can you know practice and move ahead uh, so i think yes uh, so all the students i think if you're starting with this or if you've already started and you're building up on it this is the procedure that you can follow which uh, arga just clarified upon okay let's now move to phase 2 uh so because you were preparing for sebi and upsc simultaneously those must have helped but majority of the students are preparing for multiple examinations it is not always not good to uh, you know keep all your eggs in the same basket so uh what were the sources number one and what things you did not do in order to make sure that you don't get confused or you don't get too bogged down by the problems that arise when you're preparing right so i'll start with esi uh So for ESI, I so when I first started UPSC, it was NCERT, but not right now. Hmm. So I I I looked at Sri Ram's economics notes, which was very good. Hmm. Your material, because that's why I took your material because it kind of you know concise helps you in one month you can do these things for me at least. And uh, then for social issues, I uh, again looked at Vision PT three sixty five your materials, and then at Vision monthly as well, which comes in you know society environment. all those things so you kind of always look at that i also had my upsc prep so gs1 society and gs3 economics was helpful many people probably won't get that but the one thing that i didn't do was i also used to study nunal for uh, for you know upsc i didn't do that 600 pages after march 4th or 5th because you can't do that you only mm-hmm. i only did specific topics from nunal for example inflation cpi wpi regular sources all those sources 
and the percentages, some sources, but not the whole thing. So that's what I avoided in uh, economics in the ASI. Then finance was mostly against Sriram and then completely your material. I didn't look at anything else. Again, because I didn't want to, you know, uh, confuse myself. You look at too many things, at least for a physics student, you confuse yourself in finance and economics. I didn't want to do that. Mm. Management, again, was completely your material. I didn't look at anything else, except I gave one or two mocks from certain other institutes, which kind of, you know, gives you some new questions to look at. Yes, yes. Which helps you out. So instead of studying, you just do the mocks and reverse engineer this whole thing out. Mm. And then for the last few days, I was doing a revision classes, which was, you know, concise, 40 pages, you have almost all the notes from SEBI mm. itself. So that kind of helped. And for the last few days, what I did uh, continuously was memorize the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals. Some of the articles, for example, fundamental rights, fundamental duties, and uh, DPSPs, you know, it helps. Committees, reports. So whenever, so this is kind of how you write descriptive, which I also want to talk about. I can probably talk about in a different question if you want. I can yes. just say it right now. No, you, you, can, you can start with that because I okay. was moving towards descriptive huh. only now. Huh. So descriptive, I think many people have already questioned me, how do you do it? And for you see, UPSC, you know, teaches us many tricks. One of them is even if you don't know many things, try and use different dimensions. So in a society question, you have social, economic, political, environmental. So you, instead of writing 10 points, you just write two points for each topic. Your examiner will be impressed that this guy knows how to concisely and, you know, differentiate between different points. He has an organized mind. That helps. That is what they're looking for. In also, uh, I think there was a question in economics about in ESI about climate change. How does climate change affect quality and environment? So I started out with the social, uh, the sustainable development goals itself for poverty, for health, and for climate change. So already I wanted to, you know, show that I knew those things, and then I started with the with the answer. Starting with reports and committees, there's so many reports that are coming out, committee names that you can just put in. Even if you don't know the recommendations of the committee, that doesn't, you know, stop you from talking about the committee. You can say this, and this has been recommended. Your examiner isn't always going to check all the recommendations. Most of the committees recommend kind of the same thing. So you can do those things. This is what we do usually in case that as well. Mm. So this is, this is some of those things that I did. Also, I think there was a question on budget. Uh, I think five points about the budget. Five major announcements. You write down five major announcements, you probably don't get that many marks. And it's also a 200 or 400 word answer. Mm. But this budget, you know, they came up into, I think it was, there were six parts, inclusive development and then minimum government, maximum governance, mm. health and well-being. You pick one point from, I, I prepared like that. I picked three points from each of those topics and memorized them because I knew that's what they were going to ask. So when I went, wrote the answer, I just wrote five different headings and underneath that, I used up two points so that it looks like one point. And that helps you kind of, you know, reach your target, that 400 word target, which is very hard for to reach, you know, <laughs> because mm. of, of this question. Mm. For, and then another question that I kind of, uh, uh, let me remember it right now. Finance Commission question, right? It talked about devolution to states, right? Mm. So what I did there was I talked about the devolution to states, but I started with the subsidiarity principle of the second day RC. Mm. I, I talked about how the center should all should only do the tasks that the local government can't do. Mm. So mostly your your most of the work should be done by subsidiarity, the federal principle, the subsidiarity principle that's called by the second day RC. I didn't know anything else about the second day RC like at that point, but I just knew that. So I just mm. used that. And then I started with the devolution and how they're dividing it into states and then panchayats and ULBs. Mm. That kind of gives you a wholesome answer. It, it, it adds more dimensions to your answer. Hmm. Finally, coming to English, for finance, I couldn't do anything. Sorry, I, <laughs> so those were just, you know, bookish questions. And only hmm. for corporate governance, I tried to incorporate two or three examples, but nothing fancy. And for English, again, I, I did that uh, cure thing, I guess. Prevention is better than cure essay. Hmm. And I, I took different dimensions. So I started from the local. So, for example, the easiest one is COVID, but that's an international one. So I kept it till the last. I started with local. Someone who doesn't wear a helmet while he's driving. Prevention is better than cure. Then you start with the state, the state and the central government. We are always, you know, we're talking about plastic rules, solid waste management rules. We're not implementing them. So if, so if you don't implement them, what happens is it's better to segregate the source at the beginning right than at the end. So that is, again, prevention is better than cure. Then you go up another level, which is to the COVID pandemic, because that's what they're expecting. So I talk about the vaccination and also, you know, this, all the studies that have been done, maybe we shouldn't do all the studies 
how to do it in a controlled environment. And I ended with climate change, which is very topical. And because if you can stop climate change, like one to 1.5 degrees, that's the committee say, then we can you know, prevent the catastrophic impact that will happen in 20 to 30 years. So I just wrote that and the ending was just prevention is better than cure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this is just what I used to do. Dimensions and substantiate your arguments. Mm-hmm. I think the organization of whatever knowledge you have is, is very good. And that is what probably differentiated you from a lot of other students. That is what I can figure out, uh, you know, as a listener right now. Because what little information you have from different areas, you're able to organize it well. And you're able to present it well in front of the examiner. You have a little bit of everything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So it looks Absolutely. better than, than a chole uh-huh. bhature ka thali. <laughs> right. And it, and it also helps, you know, if the examiner has a diverse diet, you just give him one thing. You probably won't like that. <laughs> yes, yes. You give him many things. They can yeah. choose. Exactly, Close exactly, exactly. And I, I think, uh, especially with respect to this question of prevention is better than cure, I think what you have given is not only relevant, but also very, very different from what normally students might have written. That is what I can figure out as of now. So you wrote very basic things, but things that are relevant, topics that are relevant, yet too basic for anyone to connect with them. Right. So the examiner might have been like, okay, this makes sense. This guy is very practical in his approach. I won't give him less marks, of course, because he makes sense. He understands what the topic is. He understands the fundamental of prevention is better than cure. And that's why he would, he would have, he, there is no chance that he would give you less marks in that. So you're, 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 you know, uh, you know, safe, safeguarding yourself from right. getting affected by that one subject, which oh. might take you down yeah another point that i also added because this was the rbi exam so economics is important so i just said i just said regulation and supervision is department rather than you know final thing yes just, yes just put that in as well if you like mm. that why not give me marks for that yes yes I, I was going to talk about that did you have any financial points or not yeah 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 because rbi right so yes <laughs> yes because that is one of the major points that i keep telling the students when you're writing an essay or any questions answer financial point has to be there because of course, RBI, not UPSC, no. RBI. No, yeah. Yes, okay. Amazing. So, uh, I, I'm certain that your interview must have gone very well. I don't know because I, I, I don't remember seeing your face in one of the mocks. No, uh, Manish sir and uh, Manish they sir. Took. Took they took, they uh, took. Yeah. Okay, amazing, amazing. This time we had a lot of students for mocks, so we had to create different teams. Uh-huh. So I, I, I don't remember, you know, taking mocks of everyone. So, uh, yeah, so interview preparation is also very different, right? So you read too many other things, functions and workings. And, right. And I don't know if you should read that before phase two functions and workings, but it, it, it's a pretty lengthy, lengthy book as well. So you yes. have to read that after phase two. Yes, yes. I don't think it makes sense to book a, uh, you no, know, to hard. make it your priority before phase two. No, no, no. It's it makes hard. sense. It's hard to read. It's hard to read. It is going to take a lot of time. Yes. So what was your, uh, how was your interview like? Any specific questions and answers that you can remember yeah. that you can explain? Yeah, so I was very stressed out before the interview, first of all, because, you know, I had a gap. I also came from a non-finance background. I was, I was doing physics for, you know, my, almost my entire life. So these were the questions that were going to come. But mm. thankfully, you know, I was in uh, Amitav sir's uh, board. He was very cordial and was very friendly. I, I, I liked the interview a lot. I thought it went very well. So the first I think he started out with how do you see yourself in 10 years or how do you see yourself in RBI in 10 years? So you talk, you know, uh, fancy things about the country, about uh, the economics, financial thing, RBI as a financial regulator, all those things. And then most of my questions surprisingly came, you know, from an international uh, uh, context, which I was expecting because I came back from US. So maybe they would ask me. So they were asking me about how the U.S. prints money and who does it, does it because I think U.S. it's the opposite, right? I think the uh, the ministry does it itself instead of the Fed, the Fed itself. So yes. so that was that was different. They also asked me about you know what happens if uh, the the interest rates of the U.S. go go up. Well, what mm-hmm. happens then? Mm-hmm. I said it would, they would outgo money, but then they say but our the, our interest rates are very high as well. So why will they outgo? Then they take away from that into liquidity trap. So these were kind of the questions that were asked and then NBFC and global financial crisis. I was expecting that because again, your US connection. So they kind of focused on that. So instead of the country thing, they focus mostly on the international space, financial mm-hmm. crisis, and then 
the, the printing of the money thing. They asked me who prints the money. I said that, but then they said which board or I think there's a bureau of something of being minting or uh, architecture or some painting. I don't know. Even so I'm not aware that, about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. But except that, I answered all the questions. So I was very confident coming out. And even you know, many people said that the chairman, chairman sir, used to go out intimidating things and then no one was laughing, no one was smiling, no, no one laughed, no one was smiling, no one was nodding. They were very engaged during my interview. They were smiling a lot. They were looking at me. The chair, Amtav sir was always you know, nodding his head. And mm. I made sure that when I was answering a question, I, I, would, I would look at everyone, not just the one who's questioning me. I would, I would look at everyone and then end it with the questioner. So mm. these were some of the things that happened and it was very good. It, it, went, it actually went very good. Hmm. I think it's uh, it's it's about personality as well. Yeah. I I I feel right now that you have a very calming and a very confident personality, which is very important. Uh, a very humbling personality is required because those people have very high egos. So if you yeah. if you try and challenge them, then then you are you you are you know going in the wrong direction. So so, uh, sir, so you know, sir started one question which was intimidating, which was that. So you have a very good academic background. I I like that, but. You don't have any work experience. So what are you going to do in RBI? So then I kind of you know, converted that from a weakness to a strength. I said I was a teaching assistant in University of Minnesota. So I already have work experience. Mm. I just don't have a work certificate because they don't give those things. Mm. So, I'm, so I, I, can, I, I kind of showed my leadership skills from college. I was a member of the cricket team, CR and all those things, class responsibilities and things. So I kind of showed those things while giving that answer. I think that impressed him a bit. So I kind of you know, converted the weakness to a strength that I have work experience, but probably yeah. not what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think instead of taking it as a challenge, we right. took it as an opportunity. A lot of students take it as a challenge. Oh, no, no, no. now we are gone. We don't have any work ex. You just, no. you just converted it around. No. That's very well. That's well. So I think uh, uh, the, the presence of mind that is required at that point of time, because no yeah. matter how, how well you prepare, and I'm very certain you must have prepared hard. Oh, you must have prepared yeah. smart. <laughs> so no matter how hard and smartly you prepare, you're always going to have those kind of bounces, yeah, especially absolutely. in the interview. Yeah. Uh, so it is about presence of mind and usage of common sense that matters a lot. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Amazing. So uh, before we finish off with the interview, uh, do you want to uh, say anything to the students, yeah. to the aspirants? Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing that I want to say is uh, we're all preparing for government exams and we are kind of unfortunate if you can think it of the, that way is that the demographic dividend is going on in India while the public service, public sector jobs are going down. Mm-hmm. So it's a, uh, you, you have heard of a twin balance sheet problem. This is also a twin problem that we are facing right now. Mm-hmm. So we don't stress about it. Mental health is very important. And this is what I realized in my three years preparing for this is that most people don't understand what you are doing. Some would force you to do other things which you probably don't want to do. Just stick with what you're doing. Take care of your mental health. Probably, you know, connect with the peers if we're experiencing stress. We have seen champions like Naomi Osaka, you know, withdrawing from championships because they're feeling stressed. So it's not just you. It happens to the best. So don't be disheartened if you don't get in this time. There's always going to be a chance. I also couldn't get in uh, UPC for two years. So you can consider that as a failure or you can consider that I'm learning new things, which I'm probably using to get RBI. So, you know, you, you always learn new things. Take care of your mental health. Don't work too hard. Work smart. So <laughs> don't just go mugging up everything. You know, I've seen many people uh, uh, mugging, uh, revising and revising from now itself for the RBI exam. I don't think that kind of helps. I, I'm pretty sure they're going to forget, right? I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure they're going to forget. So that's why what I did was the last two or three months, and that was enough for me. Read the other things. Practice hard and... All the best. <laughs> very well said. I think what you said about mental health is very unique because not a lot of people talk about it uh, because we still have some kind of stigma attached to it. Right, right, yeah. And we still feel that it is weak to be talking about mental health. That's the main problem. So the fact that we are talking it's, about it. It's not at all. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It is not at yeah, all. We should, I, we should talk about it. You we know? should talk. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, very well, very well. I think uh, the message that you've sent out is very unique, very interesting, very important, in fact. And I wish you all the best for your uh, future endeavors, for your you. new stint with RBI. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. 
you're going yeah. to have a nice time ball of time and uh, all the very best thank you sir thank you